Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the latest installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Advanced Analytics with William McKnight. Today, William will be discussing promising AI use cases for enterprise in 2024. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we'll be collecting them by the Q&A section. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, the Zoom chat defaults to send to just the panelists, but we may absolutely change that to network with everyone. To find and open both the Q&A and the chat sections, you can find those icons in the bottom middle of your screen for those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, William McKnight. William has advised many of the world's best known organizations. His strategies form the information management plan for leading companies in numerous industries. He is a prolific author and popular keynote speaker and trainer. He has performed dozens of benchmarks on leading database, data lake streaming, and data integration project products. William is a leading global influencer in data warehousing and master data management, and he leads McKnight Consulting Group, which has placed twice on the incorporated 5,000 list. And with that, I will give the floor to William to get today's webinar started. William, hello and welcome. Hello, Shannon. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is exciting for me to be talking about these AI use cases because this is what it's all about uh, when it comes to AI, getting things done, getting it into production, and getting things happening for our enterprises. So when I put this topic together about a year ago, almost a year ago, um, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I thought, I guess I thought that we would be uh, much further along with AI at this point. However, uh, reality set in a little bit there uh, this year, and I'm going to talk about that. However, uh, when you get done with this presentation, and as I got done curating this presentation, I am reinvigorated and re-enthused about AI's potential in the enterprise and what it's going to do for us as we go forward into the future. So that is kind of a little, a little bit of the story about how we came to be here. I wanted to talk about what enterprises are doing with AI, not what they could be doing or what the vendors are trying to nudge us towards doing, but what's actually happening, what's in production? That's going to be one of my uh, key criteria here. I'm not presenting anything today that's not in production. Now, it might have gone into production before this year. Not too much did, but some things did, obviously. Um, so I might I might include some of that to round out the story here that I'm presenting. But uh, I'm not talking about things in development. I'm not talking about projects that have failed. And uh, I'm not talking about projects that are really not applicable to the majority of us, not winners. And so this is going to be somewhat different from a lot of the analytics presentations that I give here because it's not going to get real technical. It's going to stay at the business level because I wanted to get a good uh, breadth of case studies out there, use studies out there for you versus going into a lot of depth. And frankly, some of the depth behind some of these projects is under NDA. And a lot of the projects are under NDA out there that I can't even talk about. However, the interesting thing about that is that sometimes uh, enterprises will NDA projects that really aren't as far along as some of these other projects that I'm going to be talking about that are not NDA. So I don't think you're missing out on too much because of that. Now, these are some of the logos that we're involved with. I'm happy to talk to you about any of them. Uh, AI is very important to most of them. Now, some of it's AI washing, all right, but uh, most of these companies are getting into a good AI strategy. And I think that's a very important criteria as you select your technologies as you go forward. Make sure that they're on AI. Make sure that they're doing something productive that you like. Uh, with AI, that they have a strategy there because I think it's a winner and I think you probably do too. I think we all do. So let's make sure that our vendors are implementing AI for real. Now, back in July, 2022, I gave a presentation right here in this series called The Future, 
based on artificial intelligence and analytics. That's available on YouTube. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. These are some of the things that I talked about there. These are some of the things that I think we were expecting from AI about now. And largely, we have got from AI about now. I mean, some of these, some of this is enterprise related, some of it's not. So I'm not going to go through this, this list necessarily in detail, but these are some of the high points that I thought of uh, almost a couple or about a couple of years ago. Music, art, deep fakes. Yeah, deep fakes. We're, we're, we're in election season, aren't we here in the United States? I think we're going to uh, encounter that more directly as we go along here. Reading intensive, healthcare. I'm going to bring up some healthcare examples here. Uh, by reading intensive, by the way, I meant that AI can read a lot better than any of us can. Hundreds of companies will be built around an API for something like ChatGPT because startups will not be able to create the AI themselves, but they can use the APIs. And that is exactly what happened. AI companions, uh, I think we all have uh, companion AI in certain pockets of our lives these days, whether we like it or not and personalized education. So I'm going to bring in some examples from some of these as we go along here. But first, the market. Grandview Research said the global AI market is expected to reach over 1.8 trillion by 2030. So it's this is huge. As a matter of fact, I, I don't talk to really pretty much anybody about projects that they're not bringing up. Well, what about the AI impact? on this project. And that's a good thing. We ought to think about this very important technology in terms of everything that we're doing. So if you're not, make sure you do that overlay of AI onto your plans. And a lot of you are planning now for 2025. So make sure AI is sitting at that table with you. Staff productivity is increasing. Most businesses are expecting that AI implementation will drive sales growth. Now, I know a business doesn't really think, but I'm talking about a lot of the people, a lot of the executives and so on in the businesses that I talk to are expecting things out of AI, are expecting big things out of AI. And the current talent pool is insufficient. Of course, I'm talking about the AI build side of the talent pool. GDP is actually expected to grow as a result of AI. This is built into government projections now. Now, I don't know how long GDP will grow based upon AI, and I don't know about the impact, impact on other aspects of the economy, such as employment and so forth, but at least GDP is expected to grow in the next few years. Now, policies for AI ethics and biases are largely undeveloped, in my opinion. Uh, it's pretty much um, an afterthought. And I think it should be more of a forethought. So I'm trying to bring that into my conversations anyway. And uh, that's where I see the market right now. There are different types of AI. And you'll find examples of all of these in the examples that I'm going to be showing you here today. Generative AI, of course. Everyone is talking about generative AI. This has to do with text, but it has to also to do with images, videos, music, and so on, using techniques like GANs and VAEs. There are applications of this in art, design, gaming, content creation, science, and then robotic process automation, which automates repetitive tasks. That's a great place to start your journey, your enterprise journey with AI. What are your repetitive tasks that perhaps could be automated with AI? There's good old data science. Now we've had this term around for a long time, but now it really does mean AI. It's the foundation for AI by preparing and analyzing data. And a lot of us are data scientists. This is what we do. We have all these tools at our disposal. But is the data in order? That's the big question. That's the big not low hanging fruit that's out there for AI advancement. I'd say it's number one, a number one impediment to AI success. So we have seen a resurgence of interest in doing the right thing with AI, or excuse me, with data, so we can get to AI. Speech recognition, computer vision. All right, you're gonna see all these in the examples. Now, some of the realities before we get into the, uh, the good side, if you will, a little bit of reality check here. And I already started because you can't help but give a reality check when you're talking about AI in the enterprise today versus the expectations 
of a year ago. Now, the whole e for the whole year, in my observation, in my walk, I see that spending, uh, enterprise spending generally, and especially on technology, has been flat. I think we can kind of agree on that. However, I see great promise for next year. The budgets that I'm seeing for next year look like they're double-digit increase, very healthy, and a lot of it's about AI. So uh, hang in there. If you want to be doing AI and you aren't yet, give next year a chance. Know, though, that 65% of predictive models are never implemented in production. And five months is the average time to develop, test, validate, deploy, and scale one new analytical model. Now, hopefully you pick up pace uh, after that first one. You get into some ML ops, which helps you shrink that time uh, and so forth. But uh, a lot of us, or those, I should say, beginning the journey to AI, uh, yeah, five months, uh, five months, I'd say, which means, practically speaking, that these projects had to have started last year in order to be in production by now. Data is still challenging. A majority of data scientist time is still spent on data wrangling. Make no mistake about it. Our data out there, it's not holistic, accurate, timely, accessible, governed, protected, and democratized. All these things that data needs to be to get to AI. There's a certain maturity level that the data has to be at in order for you to do great things with AI. And for a lot of us, that's the impediment. Now, there are, and projects are still poorly run. Okay, yeah, all right. Now, there are a lot of firms out there like Google and Apple that are doing great things with AI, of course. Uh, we could give this whole hour over to what Google's doing with AI, right? Uh, or Apple. Um, or some of those companies. So I tried to stay away from that because we're not all Google, we're not all Apple, we don't all have those kinds of resources. We're enterprises, right? My audience, usually we're talking about uh, healthcare, banking, finance, retail, manufacturing, pharma, et cetera, the enterprise. So I tried to make sure I'm pulling examples that are relatable to the enterprise not the Googles and the Apples necessarily. Now I did, I couldn't help myself because Amazon is doing some very progressive things with AI. I've got a couple Amazon examples in here, but I think they're relatable to all of us. I didn't pick on the big things, the drone delivery, right? And all that sort of thing. But I'm talking about things that we all do, like there's an example in the HR area, for example. So the reality is the future looks bright. And there are, I came up with anyway, 11 categories of AI implementations and use cases. My ground rules for these, again, before we launch in, I want the use cases in production. I want them in the enterprise. I want them to generate ideas for you. So please turn on, think about each one, think about its applicability to you, think about what this means about the future of your enterprise. And I want real AI, not AI washing, where it's not really AI. AI has kind of become a term that we're throwing around a little too much, in my opinion. So I, I tried to watch out for that. And I picked the best out there that can be talked about, okay? Not the NDA stuff. But these are, for practical purposes, these are contest winners. These are pioneers of artificial intelligence circa 2024. These are your... Uh, leaders that you want to follow. Follow the leader, not follow the follower. Follow these leaders. And I tried to bring a balance here of depth and quality. I didn't quite know where that balance would be when I started this journey of pulling together this presentation, but uh, I think I leaned a little bit more in on the side of quantity because I have quite a few use cases I wanted to share with you to give you the full picture. So we're not getting into detail about how these things work. Uh, they are hard work. They are hard work. I will add that. They don't all make it. Uh, some projects, some careers have been derailed uh, in the in the interim here uh, because of AI. It reminds me, I was watching a video the other day of Simone Biles. She was explaining how she did the amazing things that she's been doing over in Paris. And after watching the video, I don't feel like I'm 
I don't know, anywhere closer to being able to do that. So um, it's, it's hard work. And so, and, and uh, it may not be as hard as what she has done, but it is hard work and do know that as we go into this. Automated customer service. Yes, like it or hate it, it's part of our lives right now. I'm sure we experience this maybe even daily, right? Chatbots and virtual assistants driven by AI may reply to customer questions whenever they arise, improving customer response times. This is a, a first port of call if you will, for many AI journeys in the enterprise. Chatbots, conversational AI. AI, AI models can be used for hyper-targeted advertising, dynamic pricing optimization, and highly personalized leads. This can lead to increased engagement and conversion rates. And the integration of generative AI in 2024 is not just an option, but a strategic imperative. By leveraging these tools strategically, business can position themselves at the forefront of innovation, efficiency, and sustainability. So what I'm doing with each of these 11 categories is I'm introducing it like here, and then I'm going into some case studies, not just talking about it in the abstract. Who's doing what in terms of AI, automated customer service use cases? And I'm calling out Brinks Home. Uh, Brinks is, uh, of course, I think we, we would most mostly recognize them as the security company. This is on the home side. There are direct to consumer uh, play on the home side and they leverage AI to optimize service call scheduling and cross sell recommendations. They have boosted their average package size, increased customer acquisition costs and competitive pressure and so on. So I think you can see whenever you're scheduling and whenever, you, now this doesn't get into their core business of response, but it does get into the rest of their business. So all the scheduling, uh, all the upsell, cross-sell, renewals, all that sort of thing, it's handled by AI. So that was a okay thing, I thought, in, when it comes to AI use cases. But uh, I think the next one is, is really compelling. Compliance aspect, aspect tech, aspect. Aspecta. Okay, I practiced that. And I still screwed it up. Aspecta. Okay, this is a government uh, risk and compliance company in Europe. Uh, it should be make, this idea at least should be making its way to the United States because it's a great one. All the documents that are developed within an enterprise that has this is constantly being cross-checked against compliance regulations to make sure that nothing is being triggered there because their back end is full of all the compliance information and only with AI are they able to cross-reference all the things going on in the company from a tech perspective anyway to compliance and making sure that you are sound that way. Of course, we all want to be. This technology streamlines compliance efforts, improves, improves efficiency, and reduces the likelihood of human error. What else is going on in terms of automated customer service use cases, quite a bit, actually. This is probably the number one category of implemented AI in the enterprise. Now, Travel Plan Booker is a company that you can say, I'm going from A to B, uh, What? how should I get there? Uh, what are some of the things I can see along the way? How long will it take to go out of the way to see this, that, and the other thing? And they were struggling with just dealing with a rule-based system as you can imagine, for something like this. So now you can plan your trip and you can interact with it. I, I want to do that. I don't want to do that. How much longer will that take? How much will that cost? Um, give me any, you know, I'm going to add a day. What can I do to this? Things like that. Doesn't, doesn't that sound great in terms of being able to plan a trip? Um, I look forward to this in the United States. It's more European-based right now. But you get a lot of real-time flexibility with, with this system. Now, moving on, this lady is uh, blind and she likes to wear makeup. Uh, so what I'm going to do is play for you a little bit of this uh, clip I'm from blind. Estee Lauder. Now, Estee Lauder. I'm going to move it along here. Hair. Hang on. Okay. So she's applied the makeup and she's looking at her phone. Okay, I don't know if you could hear that or not, but 
Uh, the app was saying the foundation on the left and the right do not match, make sure it's smooth or something. But anyway, she interactively can apply the makeup even though she is visually impaired. And I thought that was a great use of AI. Also, Lufthansa Group, of course, they're an airline. There's a lot of opportunity when it comes to airlines and AI. So many parts in an airline. And we're going to get to some predictive maintenance here in a bit. But Lufthansa Group takes all of the variables that go into running that company in terms of crew availability, locations, passenger demand, aircraft maintenance status, weather, and many other variables. Can you kind of see all these as being data sets that are getting triaged by AI? Maybe these data sets are collected in a data lake. I don't know. That would be great. Uh, I imagine some of it is anyway. It will then send suggested scenarios, for example, a particular aircraft for a particular flight to human operations. And I underscored human operations. It's that AI human connection. And many of us are forging our AI strategies with a human in the mix. And uh, that is kind of where things are going to be for a while. So do keep that in mind. I should have said that earlier when I said, think about AI. Yeah, think about AI. Think about how a human can work with AI, how it makes us better. Lufthansa Group uses AI to manage high volumes of customer queries about canceled and rescheduled flights. So it's all, you're also interacting with conversational AI uh, at Lufthansa Group. So they are definitely a leader in terms of AI. Now, the second category is predictive maintenance and manufacturing. Um, Yes, AI algorithms analyze data from machinery to predict failures before they occur, reducing downtime and maintenance costs. And I should say, it's not all about failure necessarily, it's about optimization. So what you can get with AI analyzing all this information is redu reduction in downtime and maintenance costs, efficient maintenance plans. Let's get back to airlines. Let's say the plane's coming in, it's got a shaky part on it that's gonna to have to be replaced in the next few months. But hey, lo and behold, it's got a few minutes here at the terminal and this terminal has that part. Maybe we could do it now. Uh, maybe now is an efficient time to do it because looking at the schedule for the airplane going out months, it's not really optimized to get this part replaced then. So let's not try to squeak some more time out of it. The overall great TCO thing for the company is to repair it here right now. So that's the kind of thinking that goes into predictive maintenance and manufacturing, preventing costly emergency repairs and reducing overall maintenance expenses, taking into consideration safety hazards and what's actionable. And you know, what's really fun about this is digital twins. So this is a way to shrink, or you might say abstract the world uh, down to something that you can see the big picture and you can take action on that uh, abstractly. So in manufacturing, you have digital twins of machines, assembly lines, and entire factories for optim optimizing and troubleshooting. In healthcare, for example, you can have digital twins of patients for personalized medicine and treatment plans. So when your bio detection can be real time uh, transmitted into your digital twin, that digital twin can be much more effectively analyzed than you can. Okay, use cases, GE uses AI to monitor aircraft engines. A Boeing 747-8 contains over 6 million individual parts. An aircraft engine alone can have between 20,000 and 40,000 parts. It's almost maddening to think about trying to maintain this in any other way other than with AI. Rockwell Automation uses AI to streamline manufacturing and analyze sensor data to predict equipment failures. Yeah, that's the recurring theme in all of these. The last one I'll point out here, District of Columbia Water and Sewer Authority employs AI for predictive maintenance on water main breaks and pipe assessment using CCTV footage. So this, now I'm going to relate a different example. I was once uh, talking to a company in China about a project. We didn't do the project ultimately, but 
the project there was that there is a a light, a fire that uh, that that lights the and I'm going to get some words wrong here, but lights the power for an entire city. And that light must stay on or else we're in big, big problems here. So what they wanted to do was monitor that wick and the flame with AI for any kind of deviation from normal. And if anything happened, they would have to rush in with a, uh, I don't know, a match or something, but anyway, it was to monitor that, that fire and uh, something similar here going on with the District of Columbia monitoring water main breaks and so on. So it's a lot we can do now with uh, video monitoring and AI. Next category is fraud detection in finance. Fraud detection is where finance has been largely focusing their AI efforts and it's paying off. While fraudsters can, are constantly evolving their tactics, AI fraud detection systems can learn and adapt to new fraud patterns, improving detection accuracy. I liken it to spy versus spy for anybody that remembers that. Such solutions can be quite handy across various domains, such as banking, e-commerce, insurance, and healthcare, not just finance. So if you're considering scaling the business, consider this AI business idea as a way to mitigate fraud risks and safeguard assets and reputation. So who's been doing what in terms of it, in terms of the fraud detection? JP Morgan Chase, uh, a leader in AI, I must say. They employ over 200 data scientists and machine learning engineers, focusing on enhancing security measures and fraud detection capabilities. They use AI to detect fraudulent activity uh, and, uh, and also automate routine tasks and also help the bank comply with complex regulations by automating compliance checks. We've heard this before, right? And identifying potential risks. So they recognize the transformative power of AI and they are investing heavily in this technology to drive growth, mitigate risks, and enhance their overall business operations. Intuit, you know, the people that make the TurboTax and so on, through their generative AI operating system, which they call GenOS platform, Intuit AI offers precision in financial analysis and contributes to more secure financial operations. So they're taking advantage of technology that they may or may not have developed, but they're taking advantage of the models that are out there and can be trained on their specific data to accomplish their specific goals, which are to reduce taxes, uh, in, improve that wealth, and so on. And this other one I find pretty interesting is on Fido. On Fido's AI analyzes the document, a document for authenticity extracts relevant information. Let's see if it's a little bit of this. Your customer. Let me move it to right there. Intuitive for customers, harder for fraudsters to spoof. Our next generation technology means that just a simple head turn gets your customers verified in seconds. Okay. So it's looking at uh, 360 of your face and making sure you are you and to authenticate you into whatever it is. So by leveraging this AI on Fido has become a trusted partner for businesses seeking to verify identity efficiently and securely. It's used by a wide range of businesses across various industries. Therefore, I'm thinking you might use something like this or you might develop something like this. This is part of what's possible in the enterprise. Now, there are many examples many Your customers expect many other examples of fraud detection in finance but we're going to move on to the next category which is personalized marketing another thing that we encounter all the time right ai is revolutionizing the way businesses interact with customers by enabling highly personalized marketing campaigns this is about as close as it gets when you break this down to having a company that is almost automatically run if you can get this area of the company down right with AI. Now, there's a lot of laws that you have to take into consideration. So good AI 
would take that into consideration. So I do mention in here, for example, AI can auto optimize product pricing in real time based on customer demand, inventory levels, and competitor pricing. But there are laws around product pricing and price discrimination, things like that. So charging different prices for the same product based on factors like location, age, income, et cetera, can be illegal in some jurisdictions. So you wanna make sure you're not cross cross-referencing uh, or somehow erroneously uh, categorizing um, uh, people that way. And so that has to be an element of personalized marketing these days. There are still antitrust laws, consumer protection laws, price gouging laws, specifically the Robinson Patman Act prohibits price discrimination that harms competition. So I mention all this because I just want you to know if you get into personalized marketing, it's not all systems go head down, uh, let's, let's optimize this business at all costs. There are, there are some guardrails and great that there are really. Personalized marketing, I'm going to bring out Spotify. I know I said I was going to try to stay away from these, uh, I don't know, internet only businesses or whatever, but Spotify makes, a, we can all relate to it. And I think we can find some of what they're doing, find that way into our enterprises. Now, musicians face an uncertain future. Uh, I think we can agree on that. Uh, but Spotify is a Petri dish for AI, when you think about it. when I, I use Spotify all the time. So when I come to Spotify, it's got popular features going at me like Discover Weekly and Release Radar and, and things like this. So I'm all over that. I appreciate it sometimes, sometimes I don't, but it's usually pretty good and it's getting better as we go along in our journey together, right? So has anybody noticed that some Spotify playlists seem like all AI music? So the Spotify curated uh, playlists, it seems like that they're all AI music, like they're not really artists. And that is true, they are not. And I don't know if that's coming from Spotify, not wanting to pay artists, or if it's coming from some company that's creating the AI music, which is easy to do these days, and pushing it into Spotify to make the, the, uh, the cents on the dollars that Spotify is paying out. So anyway, we'll see about that. Uh, that's, that's some AI uh, at work as well, probably in a negative way, but Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's get positive. Back, get back to something positive here. Supply chain optimization. I think we can all agree that that's, that's a great thing. Um, AI improves logistics by predicting demand, okay? Optimizing inventory and identifying efficient delivery routes. So much here. I mean, I, I said the prior example was a Petri dish for AI. I think your supply chain is also a Petri dish for AI. Just think about all the opportunity there for delivery routes, for smart delivery, for smart inventory, uh, having it just be just in time, true just in time, finally. It also anticipates fluctuations, optimizes stock levels, and determines efficient routes. And I don't know if I have a bullet on this, but it also can evaluate offers from your manufacturers to determine if you should be taking that offer now or not. And there's a few variables, if you think about it, that go into whether you want to take that up or not. And that's AI these days. That's determining, do I have the space for it? Is there the demand for it? What's the shelf life, et cetera, et cetera. AI can also identify unusual supply chain patterns, assess the risk there, and optimize the whole supply chain structure. It also analyzes market trends and competitor pricing. So who's doing what in their supply chain? Nordstrom is an excellent example of this. They have what they call the Nordstrom Analytical Platform, NAP, for inventory control and order routing. Nordstrom's use of AI showcases its capability to enhance supply chain efficiency and offer personalized customer experiences. So they use AI, as shown here, for inventory control, order routing, predicting product demand, and optimizing inventory levels, preventing stockouts and ensuring product placement across the stores. Just think about their Petri dish 
which is product placement in the stores. All physical stores have this. And actually, all uh, internet-based stores have this as well. What are they going to show you? They want to show you what you're going to buy. And predicting that now is uh, well in the hands of AI. So AI also optimizes for Nord Nordstrom return patterns for improved product quality and logistics. Okay, yeah, see, AI is doing a lot once we get into it. AI in healthcare for diagnosis and treatment. The healthcare app field is vast and complex. AI solutions can transform the delivery of medical services by leveraging AI. So I'm, I'm particularly enthused about all these apps. These apps with AI enhance things like patient care, diagnosis and treatment, and connect users with appropriate healthcare providers faster. And as I mentioned on the slide, virtual cons consultations, health condition monitoring and wearable integration, mental health support and self-care tools also. I'm sure we can all think of them. And now we should think about them as they're a byproduct of AI. Now, for examples, I give you Moderna. Yeah. Their use of AI and drug discovery has accelerated therapeutic treatment as seen by all of us, unfortunately, in the COVID-19 vaccine development. AI analyzes genetic and protein data, identifies drug targets, optimizes mRNA therapeutic design, predicts vaccine efficacy, optimizes manufacturing and distribution processes, and aids in patient recruitment and trial design. All of these things Moderna is using AI for. Here's another company that you might think about, well, are they, I mean, they are, they are really ripe for AI. And yes, they are actually using AI. And I said, unfortunately, because, well, we had COVID, not that we had the vaccine. That was a good thing. Okay, AI and healthcare for diagnosis and treatment use cases. Also, I give you Freenome. Now they say their funding gets us all closer to bringing out early cancer detection tests to everyone, ultimately saving lives. Having had cancer in my immediate family recently, I can appreciate this and I can see the potential for AI in healthcare in this area. Startups can leap with their use of AI in this area. So there's all sorts of benefits here, personalized medicine, tailored treatments based upon individual genetic makeup. Now think about DNA as a data set. We're going to have to think about DNA as yet another data set. It's not quite there yet. It's not like as common as the weather data set or the stock market data set, but it is a data set. The convergence of DNA data and AI presents immense opportunities and significant challenges, by the way. Um, but once you get into DNA where you can say it's all there, what you will do, when, where, how, why, it's all there. And if we can get in, get into that uh, with some disease prevention, uh, that could be uh, the probable greatest thing that comes out of AI for us, notwithstanding all these other great things. Now, Babylon Health, quickly, they're a UK-based startup used in a couple of US hospitals, I think uh, more as, as time goes along here, but also in direct-to-consumer telemedicine. It uses AI for symptom detection. You see some screenshots of it on the slide here. That's Babylon Health. And she is providing personalized care plans and predicting health risks. AI-powered chatbots offer mental health support and generate prescription recommendations. So healthcare is going virtual based upon AI. Also, I don't have a slide on it, but Flow, F-L-O, no, not the progressive lady, uh, but it's a digital health companion. It's a popular health app, primarily focused on pregnancy support. So it's for women. It's become the go-to resource for millions of women worldwide. Here's another example of an AI app in healthcare. Now to another field, AI-driven financial advisory. Now we did the fraud in finance, now the advisory side of this, bringing AI business ideas to the fintech sector can empower individuals to make smarter decisions and build that wealth. For that purpose, you can create an AI-powered platform 
that provides personalized investment advice. So I'm sure AI is being used to try to predict the stock market, maybe successfully, I don't know. But this is about making sure that you are uh, on the right path for you in your journey uh, through the stock market and investments. And who's doing that? Well, Innova is a leading financial technology company that leverages AI to provide innovative financial services to underserved consumers and small businesses. So they have, you might say, a special set of challenges there in terms of credit worthiness, but at the end of the day, it, it, it may have a focused audience, but what it's doing is what a lot of apps are doing out there. It's leveraging AI to provide financial advice and financial direction to people. The other one that I show here, Binance, speaking of crypto, I wasn't speaking of crypto, but <laughs> Binance is about crypto trading. It's helping you assess your crypto portfolio and determine where to go with that crypto portfolio. It has AI powered trading bots and chat bots and AI tools to analyze market trends and sentiment to provide valuable insights to traders in the crypto world. Now, speaking of crypto, I'm launching the Advanced Analytics Coin. It's a revolutionary cryptocurrency designed to power the next generation of data-driven decision-making. How about that? Just kidding, just kidding. I feel left out though, all these coins out there. So I thought I'd have one too. Well, I'll, I'll work on that. Workforce and HR analytics is the next category. We're, we're getting closer to the end now. You're getting a good sense, I hope, of what's going on with AI out there in the enterprise. AI aids strategic workforce planning by predicting hiring needs identifying skill gaps and forecasting employee turnover. It analyzes candidate data, so it helps you hire. It identifies top talent and predicts employee departures. I guess there's a pattern to an employee relationship with their employer that is saying that this employee is going to be headed out the door. I don't know, maybe if they look in on their on whether PTO is paid if they leave or something like that. Uh, there may be some different things like that. But with AI, the beauty is you don't have to sit here and, and predict and try to do common sense like I just did. Uh, it, it does the real thing. It, it looks at real uh, patterns of departure. And that is what it takes into consideration. And it's far more nuanced, I'm sure, than really we could even hope to articulate without AI. So. AI working on that. Who's doing what, where? Uh, Amazon. Uh, yeah, I, I said I wouldn't, but I, I got to share this one because they are at the forefront of this type of AI, among others, right? They have found, self-reported, of course, great success in matching talented candidates with suitable roles, assessing them through video software and passing along this information to make contact with qualified candidates. So their whole hiring process is automated uh, up to a point uh, based upon AI. Now, I do know someone that works at Amazon. I did get this all verified that yes, uh, it does suggest suitable roles for me. It recommends relevant job openings and, and so on to my benefit and to the company's benefit. So uh, this is lauded by the employees as well. Schneider Electric, another leader in AI when it comes to this stuff. Schneider, Schneider Electric's open talent market, they call it OTM, it takes things a step further than Amazon by giving you learning and networking opportunities based upon your pattern as an employee. So by facilitating internal talent matching, OTM reduces the need for external hiring, saving time and resources. So making full use and giving full value to their employees through career development opportunities that may be small, smaller than take another job, but it may be small like, oh, look at this video. Looks like you need to look at this video so you, so you understand this thing uh, that you're going into this meeting for, et cetera, et cetera. So really cool stuff. Content creation and management. 
AI generating content. So be prudent right now about the content you see, if you care, if you care if it's AI generated or not, if you care if it's real or not, be prudent because AI is now generating a ton of the content that we are being exposed to. AI enhances marketing efficiency this way and creativity by optimizing content, enabling businesses to produce high quality content at scale with tools like personalized learning paths, predictive analytics, virtual tutor, tutors, and gamification. So it can be personal content. It can also be content that is shared broadly, like this video of Serena Williams playing uh, against herself, uh, an older Serena versus a younger Serena. Pretty cool stuff. Maybe you've seen it's it. It's a first-of-its-kind approach in the sports industry. Sorry. To make it accessible and inspiring to everyone. What's the result of more than 130,000 games generated using big to player technique developed by Stanford University? At every point one, John Chappelle showed. Okay, so you get the idea there. I thought that was a great example of using AI. This is using AI to generate a video of Serena Williams in a match with her younger self in its never done evolving ad campaign. So, Nike. Nike doing things with uh, content creation and management in AI. And also Coursera. They, ha they have all those online courses. Many organizations have an organizational uh, a contract uh, with Coursera to level up employee skills. And they use AI for personalized learning. AI analyzes student data to recommend courses and learning paths tailored to individual needs and goals. Now, in all of these, I hope you're thinking about your enterprise. You may not be in the course business, the, the, the learning business, but there are things that you want customers to learn about, your suppliers, your partners, your employees to learn about, and AI can be helpful in that regard as well. <clears throat> And let's move on to the next category. It's cybersecurity and risk management. Now, we talked about fraud, but there's way more to it, right? Uh, cybersecurity and risk management. We're talking here about threat detection, identifying potential threats in real time, enabling swift action to prevent attacks. This may or may not seem exciting to you, but the downside is tremendous, as we saw with uh, CrowdStrike. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Incident response, quickly responding to security incidents, incidents, minimizing damage and downtime, risk assessment and management, identity and access management, fraud detection, security operations, center automation, all these areas are ripe for AI. And we mostly have them in our enterprises. So here's another area that you could, could pursue AI in. Who's doing what where? And how with this? Netflix. Uh, Netflix employs AI systems to monitor systems, detect inefficiencies, and prevent disruptions. AI algorithms monitor network traffic, user behavior. Of course, just like with Spotify, they recommend things to us. They recommend movies, shows, and so on uh, based upon our watching pattern. And that is all AI. And they also monitor their system logs to detect security breaches. I wouldn't doubt, but what they're not using AI to make sure that only uh, those within a household are, are watching on one account and your daughter down the street isn't watching as well on that account or something like this, uh, which is was the new policy of theirs as of, uh, I think about six months ago. Anyway, Uber, Uber, yeah. Uber, Uber's AI algorithms analyze data to identify fraudulent transactions, assess potential risks, and automate incident response tasks, ensuring safety and monitoring, which is obviously, obviously pretty important in what they do. So they are monitoring with AI all the information that they have to determine patterns that they may want to intervene into. Both of these companies and many more understand the critical role of AI in safeguarding their platforms and protecting user data by investing in advanced cybersecurity technologies. These companies aim to maintain trust and ensure business continuity. Now, my last category is cloud pricing. And by the way, if you have any questions 
uh, please go ahead and put them in into the question area. And in a few minutes, I'll be there to answer those questions. Now, cloud pricing. This is organizations using AI to reduce cloud costs and improve efficiency. So the benefits there are cost reduction. We've seen a lot of cost reduction in the past year. I have clients that just by hyper-focusing on something uh, like their data warehouse uh, utilization, they are able to take out 40% uh, or some something like that, 30%, 40% of their costs and not really miss a beat in terms of the business. Because It's because we've been going so hard and fast over the past several years with data that we've gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves. And maybe we're not optimizing our environments or maybe we didn't optimize the environment like we should. Now, with AI, it can watch over these things. Uh, it can improve your resource utilization. It can ensure resources are used efficiently, maximizing ROI, enhanced financial planning. So prediction, prediction, uh, very important in enter enterprises. Most enterprises would rather have a, 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 a well-predicted expense stream versus one that fluctuates, but maybe ultimately is lower. Uh, they want that pred predictive nature to it. Faster time to value as well. Now, my use case I will put up for you is Airbnb. Airbnb uses AI to manage cloud capacity, optimize storage and computing, and predict user traffic help you as a place owner, what do they call them, landlords, set optimal pricing, identify underutilized or overutilized resources, just really optimize the whole thing, prevent cost overruns, uh, forecast future cloud resource needs like we just talked about, and optimize performance and cost efficiency for various services. So also AI is used for demand forecasting, predicting future resource needs based on historical usage patterns, enabling proactive resource allocation and cost forecasting. Dropbox, for example, uh, I didn't put them on the slide, but they use AI to optimize their cloud costs and reduce their AWS dependency by $75 million. Uh, crazy to think about. Analyzing cost reports and invoices to extract key metrics and identify cost-saving opportunities because that cloud bill is not simple. So AI is good and bad for AWS, isn't it now? Uh, it's good for them in terms of all the demand for what they do, uh, but also um, some people are out there with AI saving money in their arena. So in summary, though AI progress may feel like less than anticipated, and I would, I would guess that probably more than half, more than half of us in the data world probably feel like it's less than we thought it would be a year ago. I know I feel that way. It has still been strong in 2024. I gave you 11 areas that AI is, is strongly implemented. I gave you use cases in all of them. And I, let me just pick out a few that I think are very important for all of us to think about. Automated customer service predictive maintenance, fraud detection, personalized marketing. And some of these things are industry specific, but workforce and HR analytics are not. Content creation, cybersecurity, these are not. Uh, we can all do that. So I hope this came at a good time for you as you plan your next year's budget. A lot of people are doing that right now. Keep in mind, I didn't get into the future powered by AI very much, but in a future powered by AI, for example, a life services company would have access to all pertinent research data and exploit AI to create novel medications that would raise the prospect of treating illnesses like pediatric cancer. A small family business can grow steadily by tailoring offers to each individual customer. Chatbots from banks make complex transactions easy, secure, and safe, et cetera. I think you can see with the case studies that I've given you here, the best of 2024, if you will, in AI, that this is part of the world that we're going to. Good and bad, there's good and bad in that, right? And also keep in mind, follow the leader. I have shared with you the leaders of today. 
Uh, there are others. There are plenty of others, actually. But these are the ones I think you can um, pin up on your wall and say, yeah, I want to do that and more. And apply these to your enterprise. I hope you found some ideas in here. And now, Shannon, I'll turn it back to you to see if we have any questions. William, thank you so much. Such a cool topic. I do love it. Um, and we do have questions coming in. Just a reminder uh, to answer some the most commonly asked questions. I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. So diving in here, William, uh, how to know the maintenance and manufacturing? Is it by sensors? Yes, um, largely. So yeah, that's big data right there. It's pulsing. Uh, uh, data. It's reading off um, different different measurements uh, from each part, like um, what it's emitting, um, temperature, of course, things like that, uh, uh, movement, uh, all these sorts of things, uh, relationship to other parts, uh, distance to other parts, uh, if distance is being closed or is expanding uh, by very small amounts, it will know that. Different things like this that come into play in a manufacturing arena, uh, all, yes, all are mostly read out by sensors. Very cool stuff. So William, what's your favorite consumer AI product? Ha ha ha. Um, gee, I've got a few. I'm kind of, kind of surrounded by by AI um, here, uh, uh, I like to test things out. Um, there are uh, I, there are some different ones out there that I, I've been playing around with, uh, and I can't remember the name of it, but the one that that uh, makes uh, makes music, and uh, I've been able to replicate the sound of a lot of the artists that I like, and and create new albums basically by them. Uh, I don't know if they like this or not, but um, I think it's kind of cool to play with. I don't like the implications on the musicians themselves, but I've got to play with the technology and keep up. And that I'm, I'm finding, um, I'm learning, I'm learning the possibilities from playing with that tool. Of course, we we all have AI tools for writing and things like this, writing, uh, research, summarization, meeting summarizations. Uh, it's come, AI has come in really handy for me in that regard. I'm still kind of old school in terms of when I do my writing, I like to do it straight and uh, and hope for the best uh, that way uh, without a lot of AI involvement. But sometimes AI can give you ideas as to what you might want to include in this article or that post or whatnot. So yeah, there's a little bit of that going on. I, I think I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that one in, no, what, what was it, 30% or 40% of employees are using some form of AI and are feeling uh, like they are getting productivity enhancements from AI. So yeah, that's only going to grow. That's only going to grow. Oh, yes, indeed. I have to say, I love it built, built into the sound system. So when I'm producing a webinar, y'all don't hear like dogs barking, you know, things like that. It filters it out. It's very cool. Um, so, uh, I, I'm not sure I understand this, but maybe you, uh, William, um, have these companies had to deal with gen AI hallucinations? Yeah, that's, that's, that's de definitely part of it. Um, and they are replete with, uh, the AI is replete with, uh, hallucinations now. Uh, I mean, I think that any one of us can go and use AI and find something they could really question. I mean, I just, I just asked, um, for example, the other day uh, on a lark, uh, who was William McKnight? And it kind of got it right, but then it attributed some books to me that I did not write <laughs> and missed some that I did and, and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of that going on. Uh, you have to take that into consideration. Uh, they do a lot of testing. And they, I think right now uh, with a lot of the examples I gave you, they're, they're highly contained. Um, they're not like, well, let's uh, let's let it let it be free to do whatever it wants. It's they're highly contained. Do this, do that, and a lot of times companies are providing the data set to do the analysis from, and that can limit your if that's a good data set. 
that can really limit your hallucinations. So yeah, surely they exist. It's probably holding back progress, frankly, but that'll get better. Indeed. Oh, um, uh, do you have, uh, can you show the list of vendors? Or if you have that list, I can include it in the follow-up email. The vendors um, behind these implementations? Mm -hmm. uh, most of them I can, some of them I can't but I will get you something that you can share out. Yeah. Cool. They Great. should be recognized. But I will also say that I didn't focus in on any individual vendor here by any stretch. Um, I actually didn't even consider uh, the vendor when, uh, when I pulled them into this presentation. However, there are vendors that I'm going to be more familiar with than others, and they're the ones sharing uh, their use cases with me. So you might see a little more of a little more Teradata, a little more Informatica, a little more this, that, and the other thing in there. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I'll get that list to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thanks to all our attendees for being so engaged in everything that we do. I'm afraid, however, that is all the time that we have for today. Uh, just a reminder, again, I will send a follow-up email with links to the slides, links to the recording by end of day Monday, and then with that list. Well, thank you so much, William. Thank you. And thanks, y'all. Have a great day.